Hey, what's up YouTube? Here's another video by Ratchets and Wrenches. Today I'm going to show you how to uh, remove and replace the your bearing and hub assembly. Well, actually we're going to be uh, replacing the bearing and the other parts that go into the hub assembly. As you can see here, I got the this rebuild kit. You know, this is uh, on these cars, you basically going to have to remove the whole assembly and take it to a machine shop and then uh, have them press those guys in and then uh, bring the whole thing back and put it back on. So basically I'm just going to show you how to do that. Next we're going to uh, need to remove the caliper and we do that by uh, there are two uh, hex uh, bolts, hex headed bolts I guess you would call them at the back of the caliper so we're going to go ahead and remove those two next. Before we do that though it's a good idea to get a pry bar in here and uh, press the piston back. It will make uh, reinstalling this thing a lot easier. Okay next we'll remove the, these dust boots that are covering the bolts, the caliper bolts. And then we use a, let's see, a seven millimeter uh, hex bit to loosen these bolts. Next, we need to uh, remove this or unclip this uh, this uh, metal piece that holds the caliper in place. And then uh, you can uh, also get this brake line loose. And then uh, you can either use a rubber uh, bungee cord or whatever you, whatever means you have to uh, support this up here or back here where it's out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick it up and put it on my jack jack stand here. So let's see. okay. Next we'll just grab our uh, rotor and get it out of the way. Next we'll use a 15 millimeter socket to remove this uh, to remove this bolt. It goes to the outer tie rod. Okay, next uh, what I like to do is just spray with some uh, PV blaster. Then uh, you can just get a get a hammer and start hitting it on the on the knuckle. And uh, yeah, ours was uh, pretty good. You know, in Southern California, we don't deal with uh, rust and corrosion that much, so <laughs> it came out pretty easy. But if yours doesn't come out easy, you know, you can. Uh, Keep hitting it, keep spraying it with PB Blaster. Worst case scenario, you know, you can just, uh, there's, uh, actually before you do this, there's there's removers that I rent you at the parts store where, you know, there's a job, there's like two jaws that grab it here and then they press it down and uh, you can get those and those will get them out usually. Next, we need to remove this bolt. And this bolt, uh, well, it requires a Torx bit, number T50. Make sure you use the right size for this. So we put this one on this side and then... Uh, Alright, it's uh, 15 millimeter on this side. So we just uh, use uh, one wrench to keep it in place and the other one to, uh, to remove it. Alright, and then we just hit it with a rubber mallet and it'll pop out. Alright, now comes the hard and tricky part, is, uh, which is uh, separating this hub from the, the ball joint. And uh, a lot of people use uh, like a fork and then they hammer that in and they separate it, but that usually damages the, the rubber boot for the ball joint. You know, I, actually I can see some minor leaking around this. Uh, small joint anyway but still anyway the correct or the, the the best way I can think of doing it is to basically just uh, put your jack underneath here and then jack this up make sure you jack it up until uh, you know not too much you don't want to be lifting the car you just wanna you just wanna raise this control arm 
good couple of inches. Stop right before you start feeling the car lifting. <laughs> okay. Alright, so right here should be good. Next what you want to do is find the whatever you can to stick between. You know, on this car it's actually it's not that easy, but on a lot of cars like Hondas and stuff, it's pretty easy. You can just put your 3/8 ratchet in there. And but in my case, I'm gonna use this piece from my uh, chisel and punch set. I'm just gonna stick it right in there. Hammer it in a little bit if you have to. And then what we're gonna do next is uh, just rapidly lowering our jack. And then when you lower your jack, the space when when you, when this is raised, there's more space between the hub and the lower the lower control arm than when it's resting at the bottom. So when you put this solid piece of metal in there, when it hits the bottom, basically it pushes this up and it separates your uh, uh, your ball joint from the hub. Okay. So we're gonna try this this way. Nope, that didn't work, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> Alright, make sure you hammer this all the way in this time. You're not joking around. Alright, let's try this again. Alright, actually this thing separated, and uh, most of the times you hear a pop, but uh, other times, since I've doused these things for with uh, penetrating oil for the last couple hours, <laughs> and uh, again we don't have a lot of corrosion here, and this is a newer car, there's no pop. So yeah, once this is separated from the the hub assembly, here's how you get it off. All right, here's the step I forgot. When the jack is raised underneath the control arm, right before you separate your uh, you're trying to separate the, your uh, ball joints. It's a good idea to uh, to remove this upper uh, stabilizer bar that goes into your strut. And as you can see, in order for it to not turn on you, you can use a wrench on the back and uh, just turn the the snut, and it should come off. Actually, I need to lower the jack a little bit, and that's it. All right, now it's time to separate the, the lower control arm from the hub, and we're gonna do that by uh, using a long piece of pipe, and we're just gonna put it right between the right right above the the control arm, and then we're gonna run it back right underneath the car, and we're gonna use it as leverage, and we're gonna lay it right down here, and then push on this, and pull on the hub, and uh, once it clears the ball joint, we're, we're all set.